<laughs> so I wanted, you know, I wanted to watch all this year's uh, Oscar flicks and I haven't seen them all yet, but Ford versus Ferrari is definitely one of them. And it's one that did not disappoint. It was a very, very good film. It starred Matt Damon. Matt Damon. And Christian Bale, which are two of today's, in my opinion, best actors. Now, this is based on a true story that takes place in the 1960s and has to do with the Ford Motor Company wanting to beat Enzo Ferrari at this iconic, now iconic, yearly racing event called Le Mans in France. It's one of these racing events that lasts 24 hours and different car companies put up like their best designers and engineers to work on, you know, a small fleet of cars, like two or three cars that they're going to put in this event to, you know, showcase their, their skills, their car development skills, their engineering, their speed, their traction, their everything. And Ferrari wins this event year in and year out, no competition. And in the movie, which I'm not sure if this, piece is actually based on the true events but the character that plays uh lee iacocca played by john bernthal which was in the movie the accountant and played ben affleck's brother and i think he was in walking dead although i didn't really follow that show but my wife did his character in the movie pitches to the now ceo of ford which is henry ford the second that they should approach Ferrari about purchasing Ferrari or a a large percentage of their company. It's at a time where sales are dwindling for Ford and long story short, they go to pitch Ferrari on, on that sale. Ferrari tells them to go fuck themselves and Henry Ford and team get a hard on to beat Ferrari at this yearly event, this Le Mans. That they are the pinnacle of. So Lee Iacocca is tasked with putting this team together. That could actually pull something like this off. And the first person he goes to is Matt Damon. Which is a legendary race car driver. By this point in the movie. But has since retired due to uh, health conditions. He kind of sees it as you know his career being cut short. Because he still you know wanted to race. But he just couldn't anymore. But he was he was st- he was so ill that he already had a legendary status. So Matt Damon's character, which is uh, Carol Shelby, is becomes this visionary car designer, and from day one was saying that Ken Miles, which is the character of Christian Bale, is the only driver worth his salt that would be able to pull a feat like this off, if they were successful in building. A race car that could rival Ferrari. Now the thing with Ken Miles was that. He was the best driver. But an absolute loose cannon. Everything was always his way or the highway. He. Cut off his nose to spite his face. He's like that type of dude. But when it came to skills. When it came to driving. Even legendary Carroll Shelby. Recognized that Ken Miles would be the only one. To be able to like pull this type of thing off. Then throughout the movie they're dealing with corporate bullshit and interference from other folks within the Ford Corporation that want to do things a certain way and they try to cock block Ken Miles being the driver even though that's what Matt Damon wants because you know he's not you know quote-unquote corporate material and you know he's not a controllable guy then you have the other side of the corporation which is uh Lee Iacocca and you know the guy that brought this thing together but he only has like so much pull and quick aside, in real life, Lee Iacocca is responsible for developing the Mustang, the Ford Mustang, and then eventually he became um, the CEO of Chrysler in the 1980s and like revived Chrysler from being a company that was you know close to being run into the ground. So that's a pretty cool fun fact for you. But yeah, the movie's so good. It's definitely about passion. It's about Carol Shelby living vicariously through Ken Miles, who is still able to drive. It's about Ken Miles proving and that he's able to live up to his potential 
both to himself and to to his loved ones, like his wife, like his kid. It's about Ken Miles' son who idolized his dad. You know, his dad is his hero, and he wanted to, like, be seen by his dad so badly. It's about the Ford CEO, Henry Ford II, passionately and really wanting to fill in his father's shoes, or his grandfather's shoes, or his father's shoes. Because uh, he was kind of, like, sort of, like, in the shadow of the, you know, a great, iconic Henry Ford. And it's about all of them being passionate about beating Ferrari at this race. And spoiler alert, I'll give you guys a second to fast forward in case you haven't seen the movie. They fucking pull it off at the end. And Ken Miles was absolutely that dude. Even though he had some issues and setbacks during the race, he far surpassed everyone. And at least as depicted in the movie, was so far ahead that he was definitely going to win. And the corporate cock-blocking bullshit as happens within corporations sometimes when certain folks work in silos, if you will, and are able to exert some form of of influence and are corrupted by the pettiness of the power that they happen to hold within certain moments. They made him, instead of crossing the finish line alone since he was so far ahead, they asked him to fall back and wait for the other two Ford cars to catch up to him so they can all three cross the finish line together so that there can be this iconic photo of all three Ford cars finishing and it'll, you know, make headlines and be a dope picture for the company, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which he wound up obliging. And you can actually look up the actual photos from that iconic race. You'll see like the three Ford cars in the 1966 Le Mans. You know what? I'll actually link to an article that speaks about the original event and actually has a photo up at the, at the top of the three Ford cars approaching the finish line. So you guys can check that out. I'll link to it in the episode notes. Then this story has a f- pretty sad ending in that Ken Miles, you know, after the fact, after all is said and done, they accomplished this ginormous fleet, fleet, uh, feat. And, you know, they continued, you know, working on cars and doing what they love and, you know, preparing for subsequent seasons and other races. And in working on a car out of their warehouse, you know, their, he, Ken Miles was like test driving it on a track and his wife is there, his kid is there. You know, it seems like a regular type of day, you know, post this race. Matt Damon's there. A couple of the workers are there as well. And it kind of seems like like it came off to me as like they're working, but, you know, they're working on something that they love. So that doesn't really feel like work. And it's kind of like a weekend feel to it. And they're like, you know, like grilling food or something and kind of like chilling and working. You know what I mean? And, you know, he's going around on the track. He just loses control of the car. And you just see at a distance a crash and a ball of fire. And then everybody, you know, rushing to the car because there was an earlier scene in the movie with a crash and a fire when they were testing the first car, which is kind of foreshadowing, I guess, the the inevitability of what was going to happen. But kind of gets out of the car. You know, they put out like the flames that are on him and stuff. And, you know, he's relatively, unhurt, you know, not hurt or anything. And then, sadly, you know, this time around, at the end, he dies in in that accident. And his kid is there to see it, his wife. And it was just like a devastating way for him to go out. Yeah, ironically, a fitting kind of way for him to go out, you know, doing something that he loved to do. And in a blaze of glory, if you will. But yeah, man, it's a, it's a really dope movie. It's called Ford vs. Ferrari. And I definitely recommend that you guys check it out.